Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to the fifth session of Star Trek Fenrir, uh, as I usually do. Uh, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game using the Star Trek Adventures rule set. If you have no idea what that means, basically we do a lot of improv, a little bit of dice rolling. We assemble a story, both GM and player alike. Uh, for those of you that are curious, we are set in the Star Trek Online era, more specifically the year 2410, and the Fenrir herself is a Cerberus class. Now, you don't need to have watched our previous episodes, but I will say you probably will have a good time if you do. You can catch the VODs on uh, YouTube and most popular podcast solutions like iTunes, Spotify, and so on. Uh, other than that, I just have one little quick bit of shilling to do. Uh, so right now, Twitch and Patreon are some of my only sources of income at the moment. That means whatever support you can provide, be it a follow, sub, bits, donation, patron, whatever. All greatly appreciated. Just take care of yourselves first. Now, something I like doing for all my tabletop games is having an opening monologue as a uh, sort of a recap of what's going on with our player characters. And usually that would mean a captain's log, but tonight we're going to have the honor given to Mr. Matic, who has promised us, promised us some lovely techno babble. So, Mr. Matic, why don't you uh, take it away? All right. Chief Engineer's Log, star date 87704.1. It's been a long day. Beta Shift decided that instead of using a Delphic electric plasma, electroplasma decompiler to account for the now secondary backup and tertiary emergency relays on the EPS conduits <laughs> so that the three lines could be brought into phase variants, they instead decided to adjust the anion polarity by using multi-isolinear subactuators, which resulted in a cascade effect causing temporary power loss to the replicator systems and some slight damage to several bioneural gel packs. After getting Lieutenant Zines and Ensign Jitsen out of bed and medical, respectively, we were able to cause a remodulation cascade by beginning at the warp core and using a dermatrelian discriminator, which allowed us to stabilize the phase conduit on the axonic power resonators, allowing synchronization of the phase variance between the three power lines to the ship. Luckily, an added, added benefit was that we were able to create a slight bioregenerative subspace field around the neuralizing multisynaptic patterns of the Parafloric actuators allowing the slight damage to the multineural impler, impl, implers located in the bioneural gel packs to regenerate. However, we lost the field once all the packs reported in at top efficiency. I could probably use a multisynaptic argon transducers equipped with the chronotonic phase de deviator to replicate the effect. However, there's no telling what secondary effects may occur. My biggest fear would be the Elysium infusers with Bionic memory logs in the computers being affected by the time lapse occur occurred by the Carnaton field. In other news, the ship's replicators have begun producing a vast amount of rectogenos and Vulcan mochas. Jensen and two other crew members have been assigned to fix the issue, however, because I don't feel like dealing with any more rectogenos. In my honest opinion, Mr. Jensen is quite a wait, what's this? A message. To Commander Maddock from the Department of Temporal Investigations. We hereby inform you that a formal investigation. Uh, oh no, sudden power issue, message lost. What a shame. Might as well go see what uh, <laughs> Commander Williams wanted from me in the armory while I wait to hear back from Master Chief Highlong about Carruthers research so I can begin repairs on Mr. Hale in my lab in log. You may have two momentum for that lovely techno babble. <laughs> nice. All that right. was like, you barely took a breath. Yeah, that was impressive. <laughs> All right. So as uh, he has alluded to there at the end of the log, we are going to go to the armory aboard the Fenrir, where Mr. Maddock and Mr. Williams are having a uh, conversation about uh, certain events. Now, why did it not switch my... All right, let me reload the roll 20. But you guys can start. I'll mess with the stream. All right. Maddock, hey. Thanks for coming. I, I really appreciate it. Listen, I've got problems. 
down here. Specifically, club. I've got 39 problems. You want to take one down, pass it around, that way there's only 38 problems? Well, that's part of my problem. I can't pass these problems off. They require my own personal attention. But let me just let me just get into it here. Problem number one. I haven't eaten all day, and this replicator is is giving me nothing. It should have at least given you a rectus, you know. Well, watch this. And Williams is going to head over to the replicator and uh, let's say turkey sandwich on rye. And it does give him a rack to Gino, but it does that thing from Voyager where it like materializes the liquid first mm -hmm. and it just goes everywhere and then materializes the cup. So, so that's problem number one. Problems two through 38. And he's going to point to the floor where there are a pile of uh, stripped out, completely inactive phasers uh, that Maddox had used to attempt to jumpstart Alpha Section in the last session. So can you tell me where my power cells are for these phasers? Um, I mean, I'm assuming you read the reports. Yeah. Uh, I ended up having to use what Alpha Section had right. uh, phaser-wise and had to repurpose them to make sure, you know, Alpha Section survived. Right. Got it. Um, it's just that's the pile of Type 2 phasers on the floor here accounts for just about 25% of our available hand phasers. And now... Thanks to the replicators only giving me screwed up Ractaginos, I can't even replicate new power cells. Well, let me uh, take a look at that replicator real quick. Yeah. And maybe you should uh, watch and you could learn a thing or two. <laughs> and then Matic will try to fix the replicator. All right, let's have you roll an insight and engineering a difficulty of zero. Uh, am I technically trying to figure out what's wrong with uh, the source of a technical problem with my ship? You would, yes. But since right. you, I was going to say it's difficulty zero, so I, I'm i hoping you don't roll complications here. I mean, it gives me a free dice. He's hoping mm -hmm. you don't roll complications. Um, Let's see. Focus is... Power systems? <laughs> oh, I'll give you power systems on this one because it actually is relevant. Oh. oh, very nice. That is a total of four successes, which means you're capped on momentum. Very nice. Uh, yeah, it's it's an easy fix. As you detailed in your log, if you bypass the modular annulator and uh, scrub the buffer, then you'll be completely fine and it will actually function as a proper replicator. Okay, Matic hands Williams the tools and say, "Do the uh, scrub the buffer, remodulate that. All right, it's fixed. Now you know how to fix the replicator. Congratulations, welcome to engineering." Williams is going to kind of smile and say, "Awesome." So after I fix this replicator, then I'm going to show you how to recharge and calibrate 38 hand units manually. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah, he gives me an alibi. It's not. It's, it's... <laughs> and as he turns away to fix the replicator, he's like, it's less fun when they agree. I at least thought you'd bitch a little bit. Ironically, that's going to lead into our next scene. <laughs> so uh, I set this up. So we actually cut to Sixth Aft, the uh, quote unquote premier lounge on the Fenrir. Uh, it is kind of like Voyagers, uh, except it's a lot more luxurious. <laughs> Um, there are actually a number of couches, uh, in addition to a plethora of, uh, tables. Uh, but Commander Rast, uh, you are enjoying whatever beverage of choice, uh, maybe reading a pad, doing something. Uh, Lieutenant Allel is there as well. And it's peaceful, like, you know, normal lounge type things. There's obviously other people here talking, mingling. But then Rast, something odd happens. The door opens 
and in steps a very large, very, shall we say, chubby gentleman dressed as Santa Claus. And he sort of looks around. He spots you, Commander Rast, and he starts walking in your direction. What is your response? Um, he just looks up from the pad, and uh, he's just going to wait for this person to come over. Okay. Since they're coming over. So uh, he does sort of take up the opposite position of your table, and he goes, Oh, 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 Merry Christmas, Commander Rast. You're a very hard boy to find. <laughs> You are uh, out of regulation uniform. Uniform? I don't wear uniform. I'm Santa Claus. This is my uniform. <laughs> I. He, he looks at the pad real quick. I do not have a clause in the crew manifest. No, of course you wouldn't. If I was on every crew manifest out there, well, maybe it's best left unsaid. But tell me, have you been a good boy this year? Commander Williams, we have an intruder at six aft. <laughs> <laughs> On my way. And uh, while, while, I'm, while I'm leaving, I'll just, I'll just sort of look at Maddox and be like, yeah, have fun. And um, I'll slap my comm badge and say, uh, security detail, meet me at six aft. And uh, since we did qualify that Mr. Jensen <laughs> is part of your security detail, Jensen replies, uh, yes, sir, should I bring type threes? Well, we're running you know, for, your, for, for your first uh, for your first foray into security, Anson. Uh, maybe we don't uh, listen. Let's not roll quite so deep and and just grab a Type Two phaser. Understood, sir. I'll show up with an engineering kit as well. Not a bad idea. Please have a seat, uh, Ensign Claus. Oh, oh <laughs> no, I am not an ensign. But if it makes you feel better. And he actually does take a seat, uh, but he does so in one of those manners that it's like every Santa Claus at the mall where the chair is deliberately pushed back. <laughs> and, you know, he's like offering for people to come sit on his lap, you know, typical Santa things. And he says, so, Mr. You, Rast, uh, what would you uh, like once to hear? Once he offers someone to sit on his lap, have you uh, partake in the um, harassment training? Harassment training? Why would I need harassment training? This is not appropriate to be asking crew members to sit upon your lap. How else am I going to know what they want for this year? I am not sitting on your lap and you are asking me the same question. No, oh, that's because I think uh, you're a special case. Well, thank you. It's right about then that uh, Williams and Jensen make their entrance. And uh, where's Williams? There's Williams. Alel, you've noticed all of this happening. In fact, mm -hmm. most of Six Aft is like now focused on this Santa <laughs> character. Um, yeah, so she's sitting at a table by herself. She's reading a book, uh, and the title is Humans, Middle Age. And uh, she's sipping a slush o mix, and her eyes are just like, they're off the book, and she's like watching all of this go down. And when she hears like <laughs> Santa talk about wanting someone to sit on her lap she almost volunteers but then uh they walk in all right well williams uh you and jensen okay. see indeed mr santa claus seated across <laughs> the table from commander rast <laughs> so as williams comes in all right all right what seems to be the santa and Santa turns in the chair and says, Oh, Mr. Williams, you've especially been a good boy this year. I have brought exactly what you've asked for since you were a kid. And he actually produces a sack, like seemingly out of nowhere. Like he reaches behind him and a white sack materializes and he begins rummaging through it. Whoa. Um, can I get a reading on my tricorder? This guy is this, what, what is this thing? All right, yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and roll me a, we'll call it a reason and security. Uh, difficulty of two. Uh, let's see here. Wondering if, yeah, no, no, no focuses. All right, two successes. So good news, bad news. Uh, good news, you can confirm that there is a presence here like there is a physical body 
Uh, so it's not like a hologram or anything. The bad news is the tricorder has no idea what species this person is. Like, they look human, but according to the tricorder, they could be any number of species. And well, Santa's magic, everybody knows that. And almost like magic, he pulls out of his, uh, his gift sack what you've always wanted since you were a kid. Why don't you enlighten us as to what that is? An authentic 17th century squeeze box accordion. Well, that's what comes out. And God. he just pulls it out and says, you have esoteric tastes, but I think you've been a good enough boy this year to deserve it. <laughs> huh. And yeah, RJ will actually like sort of step forward uh, and maybe reach his hand out tentatively, but then <coughs> remember that, you know, He's in uniform. Sort of pull it back and uh, say, uh, you can set that on the floor. Well, set it on the table. Wouldn't want to ruin it. And he puts it on the table <laughs> between him and Rast. Uh, Santa, would you care to accompany me down to the security office? I'd like to ask you a few questions. Why the security office? This is a perfectly merry place to ask me whatever questions you might have. <sighs> All right. Who are you? I'm Santa. Also might know me as Chris Kringle. Right. And uh, Jensen sort of raises his hand like, can, can I say something, sir? Go ahead, Ensign. Santa, am I getting a present this year? And Santa says, oh, 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 of course you are, Mr. Jensen. I've gotten you something very special. And uh, he reaches into his sack again and pulls out a limited Blu-ray edition copy of the, uh, oh God, now I'm blanking on the name, uh, Yellow Brick Road. What the hell is that from? Wizard, Wizard of Oz. Oz. Wizard Thank Oz. you. Just totally blanked on that. Pulls out a limited edition copy of uh, Wizard of Oz along with a scarecrow costume, like full-on cosplay costume, and says, now you can pretend to be the scarecrow in that play you've always wanted to be. And Jensen's like, that's... I've never told anyone. I've never even written that down. How do you, how do you know that? <laughs> well, Ensign, I imagine he'll tell you that it's because he's Santa Claus. So Commander Rass, also, thank you for the, uh, the bits there, whoever that is. Um, but my <coughs> question is, at this point, Rast, what, what is your response to all of this going down? Um, he is currently, uh, put down his pad, um, mm -hmm. and he is just staring at this individual and he is going to, um, you know, try to get an emotional feel from this, uh, from this person. Okay. Uh, I would say that's going to be a insight and we'll call it commander con, uh, difficulty of one. Actually, you know what? I think this would be a difficulty three for reasons that will become apparent if you succeed. All right. I, I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and use uh, okay. one of our momentum there. Okay. So you said insight and what? Uh, either command or con. Okay. Command it is. Um. If you have people reading, empathy... Behavioral analysis. Yeah, that would apply. Three successes. Whoa. So, Rast, you are able to get a read on him, which probably immediately rules out that this is Q, which is probably what a lot of you were thinking out there, like, oh, this is just Q. It's not Q. Like, you cannot read a Q. Like, you don't even know they're there. Um, you are getting an, an emotional response and feedback from this individual. However, the reason it was a difficulty three is the power of the um, of the response you're getting. So you are now feeling an overwhelming amount of Christmas spirit. <laughs> and uh, you feel like celebrating, spreading good cheer. Uh, but because you succeeded, you are able to contain the urge to get up and begin singing uh, songs, Christmas carols with Mr. Jensen. Uh, but it was a very powerful response nonetheless. Oh, that's, that's good. Um, 
<clears throat> so Rast will uh, will at least smile for a moment. Okay, I think uh, that's a first. And then, and then he uh, then he looks at uh, Santa, mm -hmm. and I. There are regulations against unwarranted visitors onto a Starfleet vessel. Odd thing to have a regulation for Santa. Santa doesn't need regulation. <laughs> you know who does need regulation, though? <laughs> no, never mind. I won't tell that story. It's a very long and involved process. Tell me, where is, uh, where is your captain? I've uh, been meaning to talk to her about her letter that she sent when she was five. Um, hold on. Uh, captain? Yes? There's a, there's a gentleman in 6F that wishes to speak to you about a letter you wrote when you were five. <laughs> it's Santa. Oh? It's Santa Claus. She's just going to disconnect the comms <laughs> because she thinks it's a joke. But it's Rast. He wouldn't do a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if he's an after nine, she probably assumes he's been drinking. So, <laughs> or aft, whatever. What is it? Six aft. Six, six aft. Six aft. Sorry. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, she disconnects. Three nacelles to the wind. I, I don't believe she wishes to speak to you, uh, Mister Claus. Oh, you know what? I'll get her. I don't believe this individual poses a, a hostile threat to the safety of the ship or the Federation commander. Okay. All right. Awesome. So, Williams, you step out and head uh, up to the captain ready room? Sure do. All right. So we cut briefly to the ready room where uh, Captain Archuleta, what are you up to in the uh, couple of minutes before uh, Mr. Williams breaks down your door? Um, She's reviewing... Uh... Her, the next mission, what it might be, or at least the beginnings of it. Okay. Um, the good news is that right now you're just on standard patrol and exploration exploration duty. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing specific. Uh, oh, you, okay. You are maybe scheduled to stop in at uh, Deep Space Daedalus in about two weeks, but okay. other than that, you guys are just out there exploring. Okay, well, in that case, she's kind of looking over any of the data that might have come in from the Icarus and just, like, reviewing all of that. Very nice. Uh, why don't you roll me a insight and command, please? Uh, difficulty of two. Um... I don't know what I'm rolling for. Um, this is just to see if you gather any insight as to the quote unquote politics or the um, sort of the Starfleet regulations. Like you're, you're trying to get an insight as to who's actually writing these reports. Okay. Uh, I have interstellar law and politics and Starfleet, Starfleet protocols. Both would apply. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to take threat for that. Uh, so what you find, Captain Archuleta, is that there is a movement in the sector. Now, by that, I mean it's one of those things where Admiral Hamasi, uh, a Cation who you've never really met, uh, but who resides at Deep Space Daedalus, she seems to be shifting a lot of the other ships in the sector uh, away from the Fenrir. But there's, mm. there's not really a, a cause for concern yet. <coughs> it's just that the Fenrir seems to be given a lot more swaths of space to explore than other ships. Hmm. Okay, so she'll chalk that up to just being a flagship. Yeah, it's right about then that there's a chime at your door. Come in. In steps, Mr. Williams. Uh, yeah. She kind of like... Yeah turns and she's like you you gotta you get down to six aft <laughs> you weren't serious were you yeah i don't know what it is down there but it's something that looks like santa claus and it gave me an accordion <sighs> and it knows about your letter apparently that you wrote when you were five well i mean if our mission is to me, seek out so yeah. 
I mean, if our if our mission is to seek out new life and new civilizations, I mean, you could make first contact with Santa Claus. Yeah, Santa has been around since the early ages of Earth. So <sighs> she stands and like straightens her uniform and <laughs> she's like, fine. <laughs> Rest even smile. Well, now I know you're lying. Just come on. Okay, so she goes down. Uh, well, we go. Is is Maddox still in the security office? Or did he go back to engineering? That's a good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna calm him. Uh, Williams to Maddox. Maddox here. Uh, hey, if you're anywhere near a, a sensor control panel. Do you think you could use the ship's internal sensors to try to identify the entity in 6F that's claiming to be Santa Claus? Has Maddox yeah. had a run in with Santa Claus before, Eli? <laughs> you have encountered many things in your travels, Mr. Maddox. Santa Claus is not one of them. I love how he had to ask. Th there's, there's been so much. Um, Maddox will just kind of. Like he has like a phaser in both hands that he's still recharging, and he's like, "Uh, yeah, fuck it." Throws him over his shoulder, and then just walks out, walks out of the armory. <laughs> just casually then, discards the phaser he was working on. Yeah. Also, then, whoever uh, goes is and... uh, bit bombing, thank you so much. That is very generous of you. But yeah, uh, we're gonna cut back to uh, where did I put it? Six aft. And Williams, you're temporarily not there. But uh, while that's all going on, uh, and Commander Rast, feel free to uh, correct me, but would you allow, because at this point, other members, other NPCs, you know, the crew are starting to like, can, can we can we do the whole Santa thing, sir? <laughs> yes. He'll, he'll get up and, uh, and move away and let <laughs> others uh, enjoy their time with Santa. Okay. He's going to go over to the replicator and actually get a hot chocolate. Though. All right. Now, uh, nice. oh, go ahead. I was just saying, nice. Ah. Good choice. So, sure enough, uh, by the time uh, nice. Williams, the captain, and Maddock all show up in the same, more or less the same time, uh, you walk into a literal queue has formed uh, to sit on Santa's lap. And Ensign Jensen has sort of taken up the spot where Rast was and has found a hollow camera and is literally taking people's pictures with Santa Claus. And where is the captain? There is the captain. Yeah. Um, Mag's gonna walk over to the replicator and replicate one of those uh, Santa hats that have the elf ears, and he's just gonna put it on Jensen's head and goes back to the captain. Nice. Excellent. Uh, so the captain is going to take a look at the situation and kind of like grin and say, "Surely this is just someone dressing up." right uh i don't think so she's gonna look at rest are you nearby uh yeah he looks over or she i guess he's, <laughs> he's right across over. the room so <laughs> she's gonna cross her arms and wait for him to get there and then ask him when he gets there for, to brief her on santa gentleman in question uh entered into six aft and uh, sat down across from me and uh, started asking me questions, Captain. What kind of questions? If I had been good this year. Hmm. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> I then called security. <laughs> I mean, is this... Does it look like he's a fake beard? Does that look real? She's gonna like touch her own face as she like takes a closer look at like the. the it's beard a very of Santa. real, natural looking beard. Uh, in fact, it's very impressive. Maybe Maddock even is feeling a little inadequate. It's that impressive of a beard. <laughs> She's like, it looks legit. She's like, I need to go talk to him. So she decides to go talk to him. Now here's the question: Do you actually stand in line, or do you cut ahead? She's gonna cut ahead. Okay. Oh, <laughs> of course. So you know, you cut ahead. There's he like, asked for her. So <laughs> this is true. So there, there, you know, there's a little bit of grumbling from the crew, like, "Oh, Captain," 
but eventually you get to the front of the queue and uh, the ensign who is just literally given a uh, stuffed teddy bear uh, stylized after an Andorian razor beast or is it a Klingon razor beast? Either way, they get a plushie and they, the ensign runs off very happy about that. Uh, but Santa looks at you, Captain, and says, Ah, oh, yes, Miss Archuleta, come <laughs> sit on Santa's lap. Tell me about your year. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she, she's just going to take, she's going to look down and then um, she's just going to sit on the chair next to him. But she is going to lean in, just kind of like, she's just going to talk to him. Not that's trying acceptable. to cause any alarm or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's very acceptable. If uh, you're not comfortable sitting on my lap, it's okay. Because I did want to talk to you about this. And once again, reaches into his sack, pulls out like handwritten old crumpled up letter that is in your like five-year-old handwriting and says, now I've been holding on to this letter for many years. And I think it's finally time I gave you a proper response. Uh, so she's going to reach for the letter. Mm-hmm. And, and he gives it to you. Okay. She's going to take it and read it, if that's okay. Yeah. Now, okay. you can either make it up or I can make it up. I can make it up. Go for it. Uh, so she's going to look down and, and re- suddenly nostalgia will just like wash over, will just wash over her. And uh, she sees in her like, how old is she? Five? Mm-hmm five-year-old handwriting uh she says dear santa dad said that i couldn't have a pet sell at (laughs) the vulcan bear so i'm asking you for one for christmas (laughs) oh i've been really nice this year i haven't been sneaking around the station too much just a little bit but don't tell him that's all i want for christmas thank you um, she tries to sign her name and like it's cursive. just scribble. <laughs> <laughs> she tries cursive, but it ends up looking very bad. Mm-hmm. So, at, at the ahead. mention of a Vulcan bear um, possibly coming out of this bag, <laughs> <laughs> Matic has like slid one of the good hand phasers to Williams and has equipped one of his own and is like circling around, like, okay, there's about to be a bear. What the fuck? <laughs> and <laughs> Williams is just going to be like, Oh crap! And he's gonna go over to the table where his like antique accordion isn't like pick it up so that the bear doesn't wreck it. <laughs> so Santa, of course, says, "Well, it's taken me a while to find one, but I finally have your gift." And he begins rummaging in his gift sack. Does anybody she's, do anything to interrupt us? She's gonna be like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait." Yes. <laughs> But I was naughty that year, so you really don't have to. Oh, but you've been a very good girl these past, well, I shouldn't say. It's never it's never polite to say a lady's age. Well, you know, thank you. You're very kind, but that's debatable as well. So please. Oh, right. You're still 21. Now. And he winks. <sighs> but yeah, he, he reaches oh, into the yeah, sack okay. and he pulls out and he, he's making like a show of it. Like he's like, oh, oh, this is a big one. And uh, he eventually pulls out. A literal triple size sellout, living thing, and says, "Like I said, it took me a while to find one that would work with your lifestyle, but here you go." And he he offers it to you. So, the five year old in her is screaming, mm-hmm. but that was so long ago. So she just takes it graciously and then says, "Now I need to talk to you about why you're on my ship." I'm here to spread <laughs> Christmas cheer. Well, you're doing a great job, but that's Thank not you. really the nature of my question. The nature of my question is about the nature of you. I'm Santa. You understand how that doesn't logically make sense in this situation, though, right? Santa well, is a myth from Earth. A myth? No, I'm quite real. I mean, <laughs> Matic will just kind of step forward. Uh, in theory santa's based off of saint nicholas which was a real person i'm assuming that if you were to take actuality of uh aliens interacting with human society before uh we knew that there were aliens or extraterrestrials in theory there could be an actual santa who was just merely 
an alien of some kind. Um, I mean, magic is just science that isn't understood yet. <laughs> and Williams is going to sort of like sidle up over the Maddox and just lean in and be like, I knew it. I knew he was real. Maddox will just kind of, okay, buddy. And just do like that little like pat on the back. Uh, so Alel's gonna kind of like chime in, mm-hmm. and she's gonna be like, "Are you the guy with the reindeer?" Yes, I could Where name are... all of them if the GM remembered their names. I think there's seven or nine. <laughs> there's of a them. song. There's a song. Yeah. Do you have them? Are they here? I didn't see the need to bring them, but I could have them bring my sled aboard if you so wished. Oh, I was going to kind of look at the crowd in the room to see what they think about that. Um, Maddox. So uh, anyone near Maddox will kind of get like a, he'll, you'll still see him turn and go to a panel and start a, uh, using the specifications from Santa. He's going to search the entire ship using sensors mm-hmm. to see if there's any other entities matching Santa. Okay. The elves. Uh, the uh, the good news I guess... is Santa is the only one on board that is like him. Um, okay. Oh. Matic will set the computers up to uh, alert him good. if anything else shows up. And then he'll just look at Williams and be like, Krampus. And then go back to watching Santa. Krampus? And at hearing that, Williams is going to tap his combat badge and say, Williams to bridge. Uh, this is the bridge, sir. Go ahead. Can we get a long-range scan of this region of space? Are there any ships or strange anomalies One within moment, sensor sir. range? Sir, this is odd. We're detecting what appears to be a metal sled being pulled by multiple four-legged... I think those are reindeer, sir. Thank you. <laughs> uh, sir, they're, they're on a uh, intercept course. Should we raise shields? <sighs> Captain, the bridge wants to know if they should raise shields. Uh, we have reindeer on an intercept course. <laughs> Things you never expected to say for 1,000, Alex. <laughs> Out of context. Perfect. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> no, RJ, we are not raising shields for Santa's sled. All right, then, if I may, I suggest Shuttle Bay 1. Sure, let him in. Regulations do stipulate. Uh, she's going to ask Santa where he's from. Well, that's a very long and involved story, but I'd be happy to tell it if everyone would care to gather around. I would love to. All right. She's kind of like holding the baby bear. Trying very hard not to pet it. She's just holding it, very restraining herself for sure. <laughs> um, Maddox going to pull the medical tricorder out of its area mm-hmm. uh sit by a lel while he listens to the story and just be like hey can you scan us for like airborne <laughs> i don't know or is there something wrong with us i take your meaning she's like already pulling her, <laughs> her tricorder out uh roll she's me... going to scan uh matic first roll me a reason medicine please difficulty of one reason medicine and while she's doing that, Williams, like like he notices her for the first time, just calls across the room. Oh, hey, Alel. Yeah, thanks for your help with that thing. Yeah, um, you don't have a rash, do you? Uh, she's going to say pretty loudly. <laughs> just, you know, announced that apparently he now has a rash to the entire crew. I'm just asking yes or no. <laughs> no, no, I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> um, Xenovirology? Sure, I'll give it to you. No successes, so unfortunately, uh, well, you do get to activate a Lel, so you do get to give her something like a value, a talent, etc. Um, but unless you would literally spend determination here, that's not a success. Um, okay, so what a Lel sees is that everybody is not only ship shape and fit for duty, but Mm -hmm. there is a it's one of those things where medical science, even in Trek terms, uh, at least as far as I could find, there's not really a explanation for motivation and quote unquote holiday cheer. But if there were 
signs of it, like elevated, uh, what are they called? Um, Emotions. Or, or endorphins. Endorphins, Hormones. thank you. Hormones, yeah. endorphins. Like, all of that is elevated <clears throat> with everyone present in six aft. Hmm, okay. Uh, so she can't discern anything specific. And she's saying this to Maddox. She's like, can't get anything specific, but it does look like I'm getting elevated readings of, well, let's just say everyone's pretty excited. Um, everyone's, everyone's feeling very good. Oh, it almost sounds cute. Williams is going to play Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on the accordion. I would like you to roll me a very important role. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first, let's ask a few questions. Yeah. How long has it been since you've played an accordion? Oh, uh, he's he's avid in his love of the accordion. Okay, um, so and, fairly recent uh, then. I think probably fairly recently, yeah. Okay. Uh, have you dealt with a 17th century accordion before? Uh, no. Okay. I am then going to make this a fitness, and let's say, let's do a con, fitness con. <laughs> and I'm going to make the difficulty with threat a three. I... I'm spending momentum to play the accordion, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Like, I gotta. I can't embarrass Matt, myself. Matt, how does it feel it. to have the momentum you just got us for all that Texas <laughs> Apple spent on playing Woo! an accordion? Look at that. All right. Great. So three You're successes. better at the accordion than Noella is at her job. So, congratulations. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Wow. <laughs> So, yeah, you play a rousing uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and it's pitch perfect. And even Santa goes, oh, I see you've been practicing. I'm glad. <laughs> um, while Williams is playing, Maddox mm -hmm. wants to scan the accordion. Mm -hmm. He wants to see if it's, like, carbon dated, like if this thing is actually from the 17th century somehow. Okay. Or is it a replicated thing or you know a not authentic not authentic yeah uh go ahead and roll me a reason science uh difficulty of one and i'll say for sake of argument you could also get the captain's gift in this if you so wanted sure uh alien technology because it's an alien who is giving gifts and you, come on man i'll come give it to you <laughs> sure christmas spirit i'll give it to you uh you said science yes Two, yes. How what was the difficulty? Just a one. Well, you get the one success. So good news. It is authentic. It, in fact, is a 17th century accordion. And the captain's pet, it's living, breathing, just small. Okay. Um, Manic wants to do a scan of the power system to see if somehow this thing is drawing power from the ship somehow. Okay. And while he's doing that, Rast, what are you mm -hmm. making of all this situation? Uh, he has moved over to this area of the bar and is kind of paying attention, but mm -hmm. this is this is too foreign from him. He doesn't really uh, even know what Santa Claus is. So he is keeping an eye out. He basically want, wants to make sure that the captain is safe. Makes sense. Now, uh, as you're sitting there, uh, a ensign uh, dressed in uh, standard black uniform, uh, doesn't denote a, a, a color, like a department color, uh, she slides up to you next to you at the bar and says, uh, oh, Commander, this is, uh, this is certainly odd. Yes, the, uh, the appearance of a fictional being. Uh, is is quite something I wasn't expecting this evening. Mm -hmm. And as you maybe turn to get a good look at her, you see that she is, uh, she looks like a, probably about a middle-aged, maybe a bit on the younger side, a uh, human female. Um, she has long black hair, not regulation, I would say. And uh, she has what appear to be six markings on her face, two on each of the cheeks and one on, and two on the forehead. And her eyes are a unnatural purple. And I would say without even needing a roll, you know instantly that whoever this is, they are not a member of your crew. And you are? Well, you can call me Quincy for the time being. 
Quincy. Quincy. Uh, Commander Williams? <laughs> he looks over. Uh, yeah, Williams. Uh, yes, sir. We have another intruder. And uh, yeah, no, Williams will take notice of her and stop playing. Mm. Oh. This sort of paints things in a, a slightly different light for him. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little less festive. How many more of these people are there? <clears throat> That's a good question. Is there something I can do for you, Quincy? Oh, no, I'm just making sure that he has his fun. And she points at Santa Claus. He does seem to be having some fun. I know, and why interrupt such a good thing? I do not believe you are with the crew. That is correct. What, what brings you to the Fenrir? She just points at Santa again. He nods and just shakes his head a little. <clears throat> what are you? Oh, you don't know who he is, do you? The the large fat man. Yes. No. Ah. Well, perhaps we can talk about it somewhere else. She snaps her fingers and there's an iconic sound, which I'm sure you've all figured out by now. <sighs> As uh, both Quincy and Commander Rast disappear from six aft. Now, I would say, uh, Captain, you would not notice this, probably because you are a little distracted. Hey, pun. <laughs> uh, but Williams, you and Maddox would notice this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, Williams will slap his comm badge and say, uh, Williams to bridge, red alert. I want a sensor sweep. Locate Commander Rast. And uh, all around uh, six aft, those red lights begin blaring. And uh, Captain, of course, you notice this, as does everybody. And they start to like look between Santa and the red alert, and they're they're not quite sure. They're hesitant. Um, but after maybe not even thirty seconds, uh, the bridge come back and says, uh, "Sir, Commander Rast is on the primary hull." On? Yes, sir. Is he wearing an EV suit? No. <laughs> are, are, are his life signs state? Uh, yes, they are. Can you beam him back? Uh, trying to, sir. It's hard to get a lock. It's Q. She'll return him eventually. And to sort of set the scene a little bit further, we're just going to go to Theater of the Mind for this one. So, Commander Rast, you are quite literally on the front saucer section of the Fenrir as it flies through space. It is a majestic sight as uh, stars and stardust all sort of trail past you. Uh, interestingly, you are completely fine. You are able to breathe. You're able to talk. Uh, it is as if you were just in a hollow simulation. Okay. And uh, Quincy uh, sort of walks up next to you and says, it's always quaint how you uh, humanoids get around. But uh, to answer your question, I'm a Q, but Santa is Santa. Okay. Well, I'm unfamiliar with Santa, but I have heard of you. Ah, I would hope you would, but uh, I'm not that Q. I'm... For sake of argument, so it's easy for you mortals to understand, Quincy will do just fine. But uh, Santa, give you a little bit of background story. He is a uh, historical figure, or at least he's based on one. A uh, gentleman who basically went around uh, and gave gifts, good holiday cheer, a uh, very important figure in the old earth holiday custom. Uh, not really known these days, uh, or at least there's not a great importance put on it, but... Uh, apparently enough people still believe in him that he's able to manifest. It did seem to lift the spirits of the crew. Mm. That would be his purview. And for, and for that, I am thankful. 
I believe that's a different holiday, but I will tell him you said that. But I'm sure you have many questions besides the Santa ones. I will answer two of them. <laughs> he, uh, he kind of um, falls almost quiet trying to think of, okay. Mm -hmm. Other than Santa, why have you come to visit us? Well, let's just say that the Fenrir has started to attract attention. And it's, I don't want to say customary, but it kind of is. It's one of those things where once you start to reach a certain level of attention, one of the queue needs to visit you. It's so lump crew's getting a lump of coal. <laughs> I don't know um, on that who's getting a lump of coal. I'll have to get back to you on that. But right now, I think it might be Rast. We'll see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, if it helps, you have, can solicit from the others. Yeah. Okay, people. Help me out here. I was gonna ask. Um, about, I was gonna ask about the orb, but you guys can. Uh... I guess along the. Did she say any two questions, yeah, or I mean, do they have to pertain to, or does that pertain to the Santa thing? Literally anything. Ooh. What um, is causing? the attention to be drawn to us. Would you like to go with that one, Rast? What particularly have we done to gain the attention of the powerful cues? Well, uh, in my case, I simply noticed that you seem to be contacting a large number of silicon-based life forms. Now, that in and of itself, not a big deal, but... When you do it in a very rapid fashion and you start to see things that Starfleet isn't really ready to see. And uh, she, in her palm of her hand, she kind of conjures an image of the orb and you would recognize it immediately. When you start to run into things like this, uh, it's important that we, again, step in and at least make our presence known. Question on behalf of Rast. Whenever she conjures the orb, does he feel it like it's a small version of the orb, or is it just like a projection of it? That's a good question. I'm going to spend one threat that it is a miniature thing of the orb, and Rast, you are picking it up on your empathic level. Whoa. A gift for me. He reaches for it. Oh, no, no, no. You don't want this gift. <laughs> Not unless you want to be a drooling zombie. Very well. Rest assured, Commander Rast, even though you may not have the holiday cheer, as soon as Santa's done with his thing, uh, we I will depart and take him with me. After all, we have, and she like counts on her fingers, something around 5,000 planets, 600 Starfleet vessels. We have a very busy schedule. You're going to visit them all. Well, of course, that's Santa's job. He just nods. Okay. And uh, she just sort of smiles, snaps her fingers. There's that uh, cue flash of light again. And you and you alone uh, return to six aft, meaning that she does not come with you. And all of you would notice that Rast has reappeared in that flash of light. And are you all right? Yes, it seems that we have attracted the attention of a Q being. The continual... Ah, fuck. <laughs> I'll talk to... I'll try to get in touch with Q and Q. Hopefully they can give us information on Q. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds so fucking ridiculous. It does. <laughs> um. So the captain, I think, is going to when um the red alert had happened she had kind of like come out of the <laughs> joyful state that mm -hmm. she was in and realized something might have been up 
And so when, when he reappears, she stands but keeps the animal <laughs> like, in the nook of her arm mm-hmm. and goes over to the bar. That's right. Yeah. Goes over to the bar and says, what, did you say we have Q here? Am I the only one that wanted the red alert to be alternating red and green? Spending a threat. It now does. <laughs> Best threat spend I've ever done. She kind of looks around like, okay. Definitely Q. Yes. uh, (laughs) It appears that we have attracted their attention because Mm. we have been uh, encountering so many silicon-based life forms. And it appears that they were incredibly intrigued by the fact that we almost recovered the orb. Really? Hmm. I wonder what a, what it is about silicon life forms that requires the involvement of the continuum. Um, if you want my insight, Captain. Sure. Um, I've dealt with two Q previously. Um, one on the Arcadia, one on the Ophian. Um, seeing as most silicon based life forms that as far as we know, would come from Andromeda. I'm assuming it's probably an Andromeda queue uh, that's making sure that we don't follow the same trap that was set up by uh, this first queue I met, which was also the queue that um, introduced the Enterprise under Captain Picard to the board. They don't. They want to ensure that we don't move too quickly and gain attention from others, as best I can put it, Captain. All right. So this might be a warning then. Mm. No, their warnings are typically more memorable. This is probably more of a suggestion in my dealings with the Q, at least. This one may be different. Did they say how long... She looks at Rast and says, did they say how long that they were going to be here? Just long enough for the Christmas cheer to spread. And do you believe that this Q poses a threat to the ship? Well, unfortunately, it's impossible to really get a read on on her, but I do not believe she has any malevolence in her actions, at least today. Matic. All right. If I can interrupt real fast. Matic, sure. in your hands, a little model version of the Arcadia appears. Just it just appears. No fanfare, no Q flash, just materializes out of nothingness. Um, he'll just kind of put it on the table and be like, Yeah, not exactly in the Christmas mood. <laughs> and it's right about then that Santa stands up and says, Oh, well, it's been good seeing you all. You've all been very kind, and I hope the Christmas cheer has reached you. But before I go, I believe I have to give someone a very special gift. And he looks at you, Matic, and he says, I got you something very special, reaches into a sack, pulls out the same model of the Arcadia and says, but I think we all know what this means. And he kind of does this. He does an open motion with his hand and there's a, like a little flash, but it's not a Q flash. There is a flash of light and the ship vanishes from his hand. And there's like a miniature time loop where Matic, you get the ship from the future. And it, it, it's a little time loop kind of a thing. And immediately your tricorder reports the uh, the mini Arcadia has traveled through time and can do so many times. Uh, he'll just kind of look at the captain and be like, and he'll just straight up say, he's like, Captain, just to let you know, um, I don't know how much of the mess, what the message said exactly, but um, Department of Temporal Investigations wants to... Uh, investigate some stuff again you may not have done again again um just number three number three what that was like 30 arcadia 
I got six of the Arcadia by itself. And he said, he oh, actually okay. like, says that with pride. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you said it was like two times that you've been investigated at some point. So, anyway. But um, he'll just kind yeah. of, uh, um, I don't know if this may be related to that or. I'm asking your permission to kind of study this to see how it works to, you know, I mean, if it's a scale model, if you can scale something down, you can scale it up. And then he'll just kind of give like a wink, like I'm trying to say like, Hey, let's make this a time ship. She's going to, um, she's going to kind of grin and like, uh, ask him if she's gonna ask um do you ever remember those little like sponge things that you put in the bath and then they would like expand to like 11 times oh. yeah, i had dinosaurs she's like are you trying to like grow another spaceship or something grow a spaceship remodulate i mean re um remake this spaceship and then he'll just kind of stop be like hardigen class this actually could answer a lot about and then he'll just kind of stop stuff be like wait that's classified nobody heard me say that that's classified instrument uh work um with your leave i need to go to my lab sure have at it i'm sure things will wrap up here soon and actually like santa has this entire time been speaking to a few of the crew and he says well it is time for me to go just remember keep that christmas spirit in your heart and he begins to laugh, a, ho, 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 and there's literally a gust of wind with snow in it throughout Six Aft, and on the snowy wind, Santa vanishes. Rast is already looking at his pad, trying to figure out how he's going to report this. I cannot wait to read these logs. Uh, the captain's going to say, and then he was gone. And it's kind of like pet, all your gifts are still there. Oh, cute. So wait, does Matic have two like small Arcadias? So uh, what you'll find is that this Arcadia, it's like palm sized and it's got a little red button. Every time you push that red bu button, it goes back in time five seconds. <laughs> huh. Okay. That's a, okay. So like his first uh, sensors. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Hmm. And to sort of give my players a time to just decompress what just happened, we're going to take our 10 minute break here. So, uh, yeah, be back in 10 minutes, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you. 
and welcome back everyone to part two of session five of Fenrir. Uh, before we get into things, uh, I did mention it while it was happening, but we've had some very generous bit donations tonight and I want to thank uh, whoever is doing it. Thank you very much and I hope you have a lovely Christmas of your own. But uh, getting back into the swing of things, uh, we rejoin our characters, our intrepid crew of the Fenrir, uh, approximately six hours later, after everyone has been able to review their respective department's logs of the event, the Santa Claus event, as it's being called, and you're having a senior staff meeting to that effect. And what I would say is that you are free to do Matic bullshit to your heart's content, or if you need me to chip in something, just let me know. So the captain will start off by just saying report. Well, Captain, after reviewing uh, the entity's presence and going over any sort of uh, sensor readings from its uh, visit, um, as far as I can tell, uh, no systems were injured in any sort of way. Uh, there seems to be no sort of sabotage and um, all the gifts that were given, um, they still seem to be working they all still seem to be here and they all give off a registry of not existing while in the bag but then once produced once physically produced and passed along they are real mm. um, from a security or from any other aspect i can't really speak but as far as i could tell from an engineering standpoint it seems like it could be that the bag is some sort of interdimensional rift or it's a very advanced piece of uh, replicator technology um, that's under the assumption that this Santa entity is uh, real. Um, on, in regards to the Q, um, Quincy, as she referred to herself, which is quite strange, I'll mention. Um, I could try to reach out to the Arcadian crew that I met in the Shackleton Expanse or the Ophian Q that I met here in uh, here in the Sabine Expanse and uh, see what they have to say about Quincy. Okay. Um... She's going to have the little baby sell at with her. She's just going to set it on the table, yeah. let it run around. Um, I want to put a pin in reaching out to other Q for the time being uh, until we can maybe discern more of what happened. And she looks, or maybe until we can discern more of why we drew the attention on our own because I really want to avoid more Q, because <laughs> they just tend to wreak havoc. 
Uh, so that she looks to either Williams or Rast. The general feeling, however, with the crew is that, well, the visit from this Mr. Claus was very good for morale in general. Um, there is a, for lack of a better word or explanation, there is a prevalence of the Christmas spirit on board, Captain. Hmm. Hard to deny it's had a positive impact on morale. Also, if you're curious, I uh, went over some sensor logs with medical. And those reindeer? Rangifer Tarandus, also called caribou in North America. But I mean, they're the real deal, the genuine article. The sled's metallurgical composition is roughly consistent with late 18th century Earth, hmm. Europe. Hmm. Interesting. She's like, I knew we would be facing the unknown out here, but I didn't think we'd be facing Earth fol folklore. I wonder if there's more Santas. I mean, I guess we should be lucky that it was Earth's nice holly jolly santa instead of literally probably anything else in the galaxy can we just take a moment to hypothesize what a klingon santa would be like hmm quincy did say that they were visiting many it visits all the many starships mm -hmm. it visits all the honorable children and gives them all batless i like it it's now canon I just picture Feckler with a Santa hat on. <laughs> That's probably what nah, it is. I see I see Worf in like yeah, a Santa you to, suit. You have to oh, fight him yeah. for your gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, there you go. I like that. No, Galron with his fucking buggy eyes. Oh, the best part about Galron. I love it. Anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. It was just mm -hmm. a thought. Uh, so I would like the crew to log the gifts that they got from Santa. I can't believe I'm saying this sentence, but uh, if there are any sentient or sapient life forms, she nods down to the miniature Vulcan bear. Uh, I want to be sure that they're treated humanely. Not that I expect anything less of Starfleet officers, but I'd rather that kind of thing be noted. Have you uh, reported this to Starfleet at all, Commander? Uh, yes, I have sent my updated report. Any response? Was there a response? Yeah, uh, Admiral Hamasi <laughs> so just said a, one word you back. You said a report that Q brought Santa Claus? <laughs> yeah, Admiral Hamasi sent one word back and one word only, and that word is what? Question mark. <laughs> I do not believe Starfleet um, quite believed me, ma'am. Hmm. Well, I mean, we reported it. Unless it was one giant hallucination in which I'm sure we would have found out by now. And it's right about then that the entire... Rast is pulling his data pad away from the bear who's grabbed a hold of the corner of it. <laughs> It's, you know, it's in that little cute moment that there is a sudden sort of jolt in the ship. It's not a very hard jolt, but it's enough that the ship rocks. And after a moment, uh, Red Alert comes on and Officer on the Bridge says, uh, this is the bridge to senior staff. Uh, please report to the bridge. Uh, the captain will leave for the bridge. Oh, yeah. Yep. All righty. So uh, you all arrive on the bridge and you swap out with your junior officers, take up your stations. And uh, already on the view screen is a interesting uh, ship that does not match any design that you have seen thus far and not one that the ship is familiar with. If I had to describe it, if you would imagine a, uh, what are they called? Uh, the really flat fish. Um, are the, is it the flounder? The flounder? Flounder fish? Yeah. The flounder? So it's kind of like a flounder um, where they're almost pancake-like. And mm. there's, you know, it's such such a scale of the ship that there's maybe one, maybe two decks. Um, but it's flattened out. Uh, it is in an arrowhead shape. And the engines, such as they are, 
are sort of conical in the back of this arrowhead pancake thing. Um, the engines are in a cluster that would resemble that of the Saturn V rocket. So there's five different sort of engine nozzles. And mm -hmm. you're noticing that the ship, whatever it is, is firing like energy pulses at the ship, but nothing seems to be happening. If anything, your shields are just completely dissipating the energy. Hmm. Uh, do you think they're knocking? Uh, <laughs> Matic wants to do a, uh, he'll do a scan of the, I guess the weapons that are causing the energy pulse just to see if it's kind of like a, just see if it, they're weapons or if they're a communication type system. Roll me a insight engineering difficulty of one. Is there a pattern to the blasts? It's a good question. Uh, I will answer it if he succeeds. Uh, Could we do... perhaps try to hail them? Two successes. You gain one momentum. What I would say, Matic, is there is not a pattern to it because this is not a communication attempt. It is a laser weapon, but lasers don't do anything to Starfleet yes. ships. Like the lasers, lasers are... can't even penetrate our navigational deflector. Yeah, so it's one of those things where this ship, whatever it is, whoever's aboard, is taking a hostile stance, but you literally could turn off your shields and be fine. <laughs> Judging by the power generated by the laser weaponry, mm -hmm. um, can Matic make an assumption as to... I guess, what age of technology this ship and its race may be in. If you um, give me a momentum, yes. Okay. Um, or uh, I guess along the lines of... Okay, go ahead and answer that question, then I'll give you another one. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I believe it's uh, not the Tellarite, because Tellarites are the, the dwarves, uh, the other T1. Um, is it the Talar? Valerians? Thank you. Uh, it's the one that uh, there was that one episode of TNG where Picard took that one kid under his, his leadership and was they were all worried because the kid had signs of scarring. Um, that's going to bother Like that. very patriarchal. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it's the Tellarians. There you go. That's their they name. They sleep in hammocks and stuff. Yeah, that's them. Uh, they're on this. <laughs> this technology is on the same level as them. Meaning okay. that they um, are probably a few centuries behind Starfleet. I guess the follow-up question would be, uh, is this, I guess, going off of carbon dating or going off of what scans he's able to produce? Um, is this a ship that's been recently constructed, I would say, within the past decade? Or is this something that could be an effect of Santa. Q and Santa? Uh, yeah. If you give me a momentum, I will answer that question as well. Might as well. All of our momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good Go news, bad it. news. Uh, good news. Uh, this is not related to Santa or Q. Bad news. Uh, this is actually a very recent ship uh, based on the metallurgy. This has maybe been constructed within the last two or three years. Uh, mm -hmm. Captain, from what I could tell... This uh, ship is using weaponry similar to the uh, Telerians. It's very low-level laser-based, several centuries behind our technology. Um, I mean, we could drop shields and sit here for the next month and do absolutely nothing, and they wouldn't affect us at all. They would probably lose power trying to shoot us, in all honesty. Um, judging by metallurgy reports, this ship was built within the past couple of years. I don't detect any residual energy that would be equivalent to Santa or the Q. Um, as far as I can tell, this may just be one other race out here in the Sabine. So nothing uh, like this is in the Federation database? Nope. Do they even, like, does Matic pick up, like, a warp signature whenever he does a scan? I would say, since you gave me momentum, yes. And the warp trail leads all the way back to a certain subspace portal. The one to the Andromeda Galaxy. Mm. Oh, Matic. Okay, he'll also, Captain, 
It's from Andromeda. It's probably a scout ship of some kind or even... Um... Okay, would Matic recognize it from his time on Lysithia? I would say no. This is not something that the Lysithia encountered. Okay. No, and I might, I'll just... No, I don't recognize it either, uh, even from my time in the uh, Andromeda Galaxy, Captain. Uh, so she's just going to confirm. So they're not scanning us. They're firing at us. Right. But it'd be the same as if I were standing over here with a crumpled piece of paper throwing them at you. <laughs> like okay. they will do nothing. Like it, like it's literally, we could drop shields and they would run out of power before they even broke through our deflector array. Okay. Lower shields. Lowering shields. All right. Shields go down, and after a moment, uh, your con officer says, uh, Sir, I'm getting a tight beam laser communication. Uh, she's going to stand up and say on screen. Uh, it's audio only, sir, but putting it through. And uh, the voice, which I haven't been able to do this voice yet, but we all know my terrible Sean Connery impression was going to happen eventually. <laughs> yes. oh, geez. So the voice says, uh, this is the warship Amachi. Uh, you will stand down immediately and surrender yourselves for the good of the Empire. <laughs> I told you it was a terrible impression. <laughs> uh <laughs> Do we get a point of momentum for listening does, to it? Yes, <laughs> that point name, of momentum. Does that uh, name mean anything to Matic? Like, the, at any, like, none of it makes sense to Matic. In fact, it's it's, it's all new. Uh, Captain, I don't know who these people are from whatever Empire you just said, but I mean, as you can tell, they no, no, just no, don't like if you give the order to surrender, no. We're not surrendering because we're not attacking them. So, uh, and she says that too in response. She's like, we won't be surrendering because we're not being hostile towards you. Your very presence is threatening to the Empire. Well, we've detected your warp trail coming through a portal. So technically you're in our territory. There's silence. <clears throat> he says... Are you sure about that? Mr. Maddock? Uh, yeah, y'all came through the portal located on insert planet name here because I just went blank. Um, yeah, we discovered that portal about 30 years ago. We've been back and forth. I've been several times. No idea who your empire is. Um, I mean, if you want proof, I mean, I have information on the planet killers. I'm sure one won't be easy to make again and, you know, follow your warp trail back to wherever you came from. It's kind of like odd. an open threat kind of thing. Right, yeah. He says, That's very odd. I mean, there was a period when we were in cryosleep that uh, we were unable to discern what happened. We simply woke up here, assumed that we were in Empire space. Uh, perhaps a face-to-face. -face. What? How long ago did y'all wake up? Approximately, uh, and he gives a time which, out of character, maybe two days. Y'all ship was only built two to three years ago. How would y'all steal this ship? Silence. Captain, I think they stole the ship. I'm not following <laughs> in or out of character. <laughs> so, what are you um, out of character. So I think what Maddox is alluding to is the ship was built about two to three years ago. Okay. They are claiming that they have been in cryosleep until about two days ago. Okay. Meaning that the ship has transited from where it originated in the Andromeda Galaxy to here in the Milky Way. And there is a disconnect between what they knew and where they expected to end it up. If that, if it, I mean, do you track that or... Uh, sure. We can just go with it. Okay. I mean, I could, I could break it down further if it would help. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Okay. I guess I, <laughs> this ship was already here. 
Okay, so imagine that, at least based on the story that's being told so far by this horrible Sean Connery person. Okay. Um, he is telling you that he has been in cryosleep for several years. Okay. And that he came from a place that he has been calling the Empire. Nobody knows what the Empire is. Based on what Maddox has seen of the warp trail, uh, the warp trail goes to the portal that mm -hmm. leads to the Andromeda galaxy. Okay. So they have come from Andromeda to here, supposedly. But they didn't just wake up here. Sort right. of, yes. They, they have more or less traveled for a few days, and then they have encountered you. Okay. So they have been in the Milky Way for a couple of days, but they okay. don't know that they're in an entirely new galaxy. Okay. Uh, so what was your last, what was your last few words to them, Maddox? Um, whenever I threatened to send a, an apocalypse causing device to their home planet or the part where I said their ship stolen. Stolen. Let's go with the stolen part. Uh, I would just kept, uh, no, they didn't respond. And so then I just kind of look at you, Captain. I'm like, yeah, I think they stole their ship whenever they woke up. Probably some science team fucking uh, exploring their world. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so she's going to speak to Sean Connery and say, uh, I think a face to face would be in order. She's not really picking up anything like malicious. And if this is a new. Are they if they are from Andromeda, she wants to make sure that she treats them with respect. So can I sense anything from them? Roll me a insight and either command or con a difficulty of, let's say, two. Okay. I think that would where'd my screen go? All right. Seriously, where where did it go? There it is. Okay. <clears throat> I'll use the one momentum we got for listening to the Sean Connery. Okay. I only get to do the accent once a game, so uh, <laughs> one success here. Uh, I'm gonna take threat so that you succeed. Um, so, Commander Rast, you are sensing something. And it's a similar sensation to, like, with Santa, you got Christmas <laughs> cheer. I'm not saying that this is the opposite of that, but it's an overwhelming sense of desperation and deception. As in, almost like a habitual liar that has been trapped within one of their lies. Like, someone has confronted them about, like, their what they've been saying for the past x amount of time that's the general sense you're getting from them so there is a lot of deceit coming from them captain hmm. i recommend caution if you uh wish to continue this course of action well i don't see can we discern what species well no it's audio only right mm -hmm. okay um yeah, let's do face to face. That'd be good. So I guess that. Do you have a? She's gonna actually speak to them, over comms. Like, do you have a video feed you could turn on, so we can talk that way? I think Captain, they're suggesting that they either come over here or we go over there. I know, but. This would be easier. <laughs> right. Uh, and the individual on the other end says, is there a nearby planet that we could use for our purposes? What purposes? They're face to face. Oh. Uh, she looks to whoever scans for what's nearby, I guess, or unless she knows. And Lieutenant Ralosh, your con officer, sort of turns and just shakes her head. There's nothing nearby. No, we don't have a uh, planetoid. 
to land on. So why don't you just beam on over? I'm sorry, what does beam mean? Transport? Are you familiar with that technology? It's basically teleporting. These are strange words that you are saying. We do not understand them. Well, lower your shields and we'll just show you. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Uh, roll me a presence and command. Uh, difficulty of, let's call this a one here. Don't forget about your automatic success. Yep. My what? Because you have uh, augmented ability presence. And okay. I actually need to give that threat back because Ras would have succeeded with his as well. Ah, yeah. right, so that is a grand total of two successes. Uh, however, that is a complication. Would you like the okay. complication or would you like uh, me to take two threat? I'll take the complication. Yeah. All right. I think the complication is <laughs> more fun anyway. Yeah. So... You know, you do that sort of subtle nod to do the whole beam over thing. And when you do, um, the transporter chief doesn't really get the sense that he's meant to beam them to, like, the transporter room. He thinks the captain means the bridge. <laughs> okay. So literally materializing in the space before you is a humanoid gentleman. Uh, he looks to be... Um, humanoid in nature, so two arms, two legs, uh, lower and upper torso, one head. Um, but what you're really noticing about him is that he appears to be heavily augmented in such a way that large portions of where you would expect flesh are machine. Now, it's very important here. This is not Borg. It is more akin to a, almost like a cyberpunk or more of a... Um, almost like an Adam Jensen scenario where the limbs have been replaced with sort of, I, I hate to use the word robotic, but robotic sort of analogs. So Sword arms. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> Darth Vader without the annoying breathing machine. Yeah, something like that. Um, he, The most prominent of these is sort of a contraption that forms his lower jaw and goes up the side of his face. And he has these tufts of white hair that are sort of haphazardly sticking out. Um, he has also a very large prominent scar that runs down the his from his forehead to his right cheek and goes across his left pupil. And uh, he kind of looks around and says, What have you done? How have you brought me here? Uh, you wanted a face-to-face -face meeting. This is witchcraft. So Magic is just technology that is understood yet. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> and he, he kind of looks around, sees, you know, the three humans aboard. Then there's Mr. Rast, who's not. And then Ralosh, definitely not human. And he says, Okay, so I'm going to be clear here. I sort of stole that ship and wasn't really expecting to get anywhere. So if you could just like send me back and then you go back to where you came from sure let's go with that do you need an escort yes please we have no idea what we're doing <laughs> that's obvious can you tell me more about your people and where you come from he hesitates very noticeably on this and does not answer you. Uh, Matic will change the view screen to <laughs> the star charts that Lysithia grabbed of the Andromeda galaxy mm -hmm. and current known borders along with landmarks of different, like, oh, hey, there's this nebula, like, you know. And he'll just kind of be like, there's a image of the Andromeda galaxy if that helps you answer the captain. All right, I do. would like, <clears throat> let's have the captain do a presence command. Matic, you're going to be assisting with a presence engineering. The combined difficulty on this is a four. 
Yeah, let's make it a four. Um, interstellar law and politics. This would be more of a survey. Uh, let me see here. I don't think you quite have a focus looking at your focus lists here. Okay. Um, yeah, I was thinking maybe composure. I'll give you composure because you're you're trying to read the composure of someone else. Okay. Are we rolling together? Uh, you should what? roll first. Okay. And then Maddox should roll. All right. There's two successes. Um, um, actually, three successes because of augmented presence. Okay. Assisting, I can still give you threat from a dice, right? Uh, no, the assisting character cannot buy additional dice. That's what I thought. Um, um, GM, are we free to move on this on, on the bridge? Yeah, yeah, go for yeah, it. Just because I'm going to bring myself down to sort of. Sort of cut down the angles where he can escape. Rass moved you. Yeah, I love that Rass is doing the pincer maneuver. <laughs> Just like closing uh, in on this guy. There's right. four. So all of this combined as Rast and Williams sort of advance, uh, the gentleman's finally, you know, raises his hands and his accent changes completely, like something completely different. And <laughs> this one is now more of a French accent, and he says Okay, you have caught me. I am actually working for the Packleds. Damn Starfleet swine. Packlets? Also, I apologize to any Frenchman who might be out there listening. I think you're uh, wonderful Packlet? people. I think you're wonderful people. We're Packleds. Which ones are the Packleds? Packleds are, are the... smart. We yeah, are we are smart. We find things to make us go. Can you make us go? Oh, He's oh, working for one. them? Mm hmm Okay. Um... Matic oh, will just kind of look at Rast and be like, scale of one to ten, how much bullshit was that? Um, he's still lying, I assume. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm gonna, he's... I'm gonna chime in if I can, um, and just sort of kind of put on my most serious face and say, listen, you can either tell us what we need to know, or I can take you down to security to interrogate you. Right. I'll take him down to security. We're right here. Roll me a present security difficulty of two. Um, well, All my the social roles. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He is, of course, he is, of course, still lying, Captain. Mm -hmm. uh, would my um, focus in interrogation apply here? Yeah, I'd give it to you. Cool. Um, go ahead and give yourself a point of threat for an extra diet there. Okay. Oh, so uh, he does change his accent again, but uh, <laughs> this time it's a much more regular accent because I'm out of accents. I can do two. Um, so he says, OK, I'm not working for the pack leads. But that's all he says. Uh, Matic is going to try to pull pull up a uh, containment field of sorts. Mm hmm. Um, and he wants to basically uh, set it up to where, assuming that this guy's cybernetic somewhere has a way to help him get out of containment fields, mm -hmm. it kind of backfires, I guess. Like it would. Uh, like I if think he I tries see where you're to, going with okay. this. Yeah, I think I see where you're going. <clears throat> yeah, you're you're able to do a containment field around him, no problem, with uh, contingencies in place. Should he try to breach it. But the question is, where do you guys go from here? He is just sort of there. Um, Matic will pull up an image of the planet killer and mm -hmm. uh, on the view screen, on top, kind of like overlaid on the star map he already has pulled up. And he's like, do you recognize this? Never seen it before in my life. Okay. And has he? <laughs> uh, that is the truth, actually, Rast. He's telling uh -huh. the truth. Um, how old were the planet killers that Medic would have researched on? Old enough, I would say. Like, a couple centuries, a couple millennia? Mo like definitely beyond millennia. Oh. Um, 
Yeah, he'll just kind of look at the captain and be like, these were used quite extensively in the Andromeda Galaxy, and, I mean, it's been several millennia since any of them were active. How long was this dude asleep for? Well, everything he has said has been a lie. I don't, uh, there, the, I haven't picked up a single truthful thing this man has said since he has been in contact with us. Well, then he can enjoy some time in the brig until he decides he wants to talk. Or we could just leave him there and watch and have him watch as we, uh, scuttle what's left of the ship that i couldn't stole. even tell i couldn't even tell you if he actually stole the ship i did steal the ship and is he telling the truth he's telling the truth all right so he did steal the ship he is capable of telling the truth <clears throat> but uh, i can see where this is going how about uh, how about we make a deal i'll uh, i'll tell you where i dumped the crew of that vessel if you let us go us well, you know, my, my crew, my my gang back on the, the ship. Hmm. Well, the... you don't really have a whole lot of leverage here. Your ship can't do damage to ours, so you're just going to tell us. <laughs> Presence command, difficulty two. I can give him a threat. Composure? No, this would be something more like um, intimidation or persuasion. Mm. Okay. Just to maintain her composure to intimidate somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, three successes. So uh, you do gain some momentum from that. And uh, the gentleman caves. He says, all right, all right, all right. Just... You know, you've caught us with our pants down here. We weren't really expecting to run into Starfleet for quite a while. All right, look, uh, there's a planet about, I don't know, that way. He, like, points behind him at the view screen. I, it, it's it's logged on the ship, but there were a bunch of snake people. I, I don't know what they're called, but we just basically dumped them on a planet and took their ship. So... Is this the Ma Azeth? Azeth? Matic wants to, as soon as he says that, Matic wants to scan the uh, hull of the ship to see if it matches the snake people, the Lamias they met before. Yes, uh, you scan it, and it's interesting because the hull, I mean, now that you, so let me back up. Again, I'd like to confirm that, yes, the this ship is two to three years old. However... Now that you were specifically scanning based on the Azleth that you were able to obviously scan before, this is a several centuries old Azleth ship. But it's two or three years old by itself. Correct. So it's a newer ship built on an old design. Reverse that. It is an older ship that has perhaps traveled through time. Oh, oh. Sorry, uh, I, it, it's always hard to convey these things without, like, spelling it out, but... Okay. Uh, I was about to be like, oh, museum piece <laughs> thing. Um, Matic wants to scan I was for thinking, I was thinking lost, a lost colony or something. So does that mean that they time traveled to get here? There's a lot of questions. Matic will scan for chronotons. Okay. So, yes, you immediately scan for chronotons, and yeah, that ship's full of it. Hmm. Uh, Captain, he'll just kind of turn his chair and be like, all right, I, fa I think I know why the investigations department's going to come investigate me. That thing's full of chronotons. I want to go look at it. Well, first we need to make sure that the people who do own that ship are safe. And then I, if, with their permission, I will let you look at it. The people that own it, you mean the crew itself or the yeah, crew that's the on crew it, that got dumped off on that planet. So, well, mm. under the assumption that coming at some point that this ship itself came to the future, um, does he have carnitons on him or is he clean? He's clean. Okay. Oh, he okay. 
So best guess, Captain, is that the ship itself came through um, somehow this man and his merry band of themes thieves decided to uh, steal it and then come through the portal to uh, reach this side of the galaxy uh, or this side of the universe. Yeah, universe. So I wonder um, if traveling through the wormhole also has like chronoton, a chronoton effect on the ship. Uh, it That's does my to hint. an ex- It does to an extent, but I believe on the Lysithia we were able to counteract that. Okay. Uh, with a, with security, I am giving you permission to go over there. We could do both simultaneously. Why not rig a tractor beam and tow the ship along with us? Will the Fenrir more... fit through the portal? Uh, as its current state, no. But it does but sound it like you might need to go there regardless. But multi vector, we would. Oh yeah, if you uh, did multi vector, you could fit each part through individually. But yeah, combine. Let's, let's split up again. Yeah, combine not so much. Captain, I think we're about to break the. T- I think, well, for y'all, it'll be the first time. For me, it's just another Tuesday. Um, Temporal prom directive. How far can I get to breaking it? Like he he's just blank faced. Like he's like. It's just another Tuesday. Like, can I break it or like? <laughs> I don't know, Captain and Commander Rass. This is a uh, command level decision. You know, why not? Because all of these ships have abandoned us here anyway. So what do you think, Rast? I believe that if we are able to help these... Uh, these individuals out that have maybe accidentally traveled through time, uh, it could go uh, it could go a small ways to our relationships with them in this time frame. Yeah, I think it, the the juice is worth the squeeze in this case. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that, but I heard two yeses. So uh, Williams, I'd like a security team, uh, transporter room, or transporter chief. The one that transported the guy to the bridge mm-hmm. is fired, but so, no, it's, I want to speak to you whenever <laughs> I get back. However, uh, beam me and a security team over to the other ship. And if you can, I guess just beam their crew over here to the brig. Let's go ahead and lock them up. All righty. So this is sort of where we've come to the end of the session because I have to do a lot of handouts. Um, I thought Santa would take more time, honestly, but that's okay. Santa took the prerequisite amount of time and we had fun with it. Didn't overstay its welcome. Um, So I think this is where we're going to call the session because I got to write, obviously, handouts and material. Um, But this is where we will pick up uh, at the new year. Um, Looking at a calendar, uh, that would be January 7th. So barring any scheduling problems, uh, this crew will return on January 7th. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully everyone had a good time. Uh, it sounded like we got to do a little bit of a Christmassy episode, which mm-hmm. was the idea. Um, but yeah, this is Rum and the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, right. etc. cetera. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you later. Bye stream. Bye, Bye guys. Later.